On November 9, 1971, the affluent community of Westfield, New Jersey, witnessed one of the most horrific family murders in American history. John List, a soft-spoken accountant and devout Lutheran, methodically killed his entire family, his wife, mother, and three children. He held prestigious accounting and managerial positions, owned a beautiful Victorian mansion in New Jersey, and lived with his wife, Helen, his mother, Alma, and his three children, Patricia, John, and Frederick. List was a quiet man, known for his devout Lutheran beliefs and strong moral principles, a devotion that was integral to his identity. However, beneath the surface, John List's life was unraveling. He had lost his job and struggled to find consistent employment, and his family's expenses far outpaced his dwindling income. Rather than admit his financial difficulties to his family or community, List withdrew deeper into his devout beliefs and grew increasingly anxious about his ability to provide for his family. Helen was also suffering from her own health issues, which exacerbated the stress. She had contracted syphilis from her first husband, a condition she concealed from John until their marriage. The disease left her bedridden and increasingly dependent on him, which strained their relationship even further. On the morning of November 9, 1971, List set his chilling plan in motion. He gathered his handgun and a .22 caliber revolver, both purchased months prior, and calmly began his murderous task. The first to die was his wife, Helen. After his children left for school, John shot her in the head in their kitchen. Then, he went upstairs to his mother's room and, after telling her he planned to make lunch, shot her as well. Alma was 84 and in poor health, but John showed no mercy. His actions were cold and calculated, he seemed methodical and detached, ensuring each family member was dispatched without an opportunity to resist. After killing his wife and mother, List cleaned up and awaited the return of his children. Patricia, his 16-year-old daughter, was the first to arrive home. As soon as she stepped inside, he shot her. Hours later, his younger son Frederick returned, and List killed him in the same fashion. His eldest son, 15-year-old John Jr., had stayed late for soccer practice. When he finally arrived, List killed him as well, although John Jr. fought back, evidenced by multiple gunshot wounds. This gruesome act marked the culmination of List's plan to save his family from financial ruin and sin. After the murders, John List placed each family member's body on sleeping bags in the ballroom, creating a macabre display. His mother's body remained upstairs in her bedroom, too heavy for him to move. Following the murders, List wrote several letters, including a confession letter to his pastor. In the letter, List expressed that his family's souls were in peril due to financial hardship and the moral decline he perceived in his children, especially his daughter Patricia, who was interested in acting, a profession List deemed sinful. List genuinely believed that by killing them, he was saving their souls from a life of sin. He meticulously cleaned the crime scene, turned down the thermostat to slow decomposition, and canceled the family's milk and newspaper deliveries. List then vanished. He drove to John F. Kennedy International Airport, left his car in a parking lot, and boarded a bus to Denver, Colorado, under a new identity, Robert P. Clark. For 18 years, John List's horrific crimes remained unsolved. Authorities had no leads and no idea where he might have fled. The case went cold, and the mansion, Breeze Knoll, stood empty until it was destroyed by arson in 1972. The breakthrough in the case came years later in 1989, when the Federal Bureau of Investigation featured List on the television program America's Most Wanted. On May 21, 1989, only days after the broadcast, a tip came in from Richmond, Virginia. A neighbor recognized Robert P. Clark, a quiet accountant who had married a widow named Dolores and was living an unassuming life in Denver, Colorado. He was arrested without incident, marking the end of his nearly two-decade run from justice. John List was extradited to New Jersey and faced five counts of first-degree murder. His defense attempted an insanity plea, arguing that List suffered from a mental disorder that impaired his judgment, leading him to believe the murders were a necessary act to save his family. The prosecution argued that List's actions were premeditated and calculated.
He had planned the murders over several months, acquiring firearms, writing a confession, and arranging for his family's affairs to go unnoticed. The jury ultimately sided with the prosecution, finding him guilty on all counts. On April 12, 1990, List was sentenced to five consecutive life terms in prison without the possibility of parole. Raised with strict moral codes, he internalized an inflexible worldview that left no room for failure or deviation from traditional roles. The financial crisis further exacerbated his mental state. Faced with mounting debts, he felt humiliated and emasculated, unable to live up to his self-imposed standards of manhood. In his twisted logic, murder was a way to preserve his family's integrity in the afterlife, sparing them from poverty and, as he saw it, moral degradation. List's letter to his pastor also highlights the extent of his delusions. He rationalized the murders as a benevolent act, genuinely believing he was saving his family from the sins he perceived around him. After his sentencing, List resided at New Jersey State Prison, where he largely kept to himself and continued to justify his actions. He remained in prison for the remainder of his life, passing away on March 21, 2008, at age 82 due to complications from pneumonia.